Hello, Chris P. Williams here. I hope you're well. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at the lighting filter within Affinity Photo. And to start, we're just going to duplicate my background, Control and J or Command and J on a Mac. And I'm going to click on that text. I'm just going to call it Light. And now making sure that layer is still selected, we're going to go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and we're going to scroll down to the, almost down to the bottom onto lighting filter and now we're presented with this rather unusual looking cone and this control palette for the live lighting tool now the control palette a lot of what's on here is emulated by these nodes you see making up this pyramid and to demonstrate that what I'll do I'll just click on this outer node and I'll drag it out slightly and if you look at the control panel you can see that the distance slider is moving as I move this around our stage you can use this node to change the angle and distance. And likewise, as I change the angle, you can see the direction, the little white spot in this direction sphere is moving with it. Now, when I rotate this node, it remains around this point. So this middle node here is the center point. So if I was to position that on this cross here, wherever I position my light, no matter how far, how near, or where in my scene, the central point will always stay where this node lies. You'll also note that as I rotate around that central point, the direction sphere, this actual control spot on the, on the outside edge, stays on the outside edge. And that's because it's moving around on a 2D plane. Now just beneath there, we have a second node. And this node directly relates to the direction sphere. And if I grab that node, I can again rotate around my scene. But what else this allows me to do is it allows me to bring the light in front of my scene. So if I try to position it so it's centered on that cross, you can see in this direction sphere, it's now center. And the reason you should view this as a sphere is because this is almost like a three-dimensional tool in a two-dimensional space. So you can imagine I'm standing in front of a stage and I'm pointing my light or my torch at the stage from a central location. And as you can see, I can position it wherever I like. Now, as it stands, the scene looks quite flat. Uh, there's no texture and it looks it looks very much two dimensional and we can fix this a little bit later on but first of all what I'm going to do I'm going to position this light so it's about 35 degrees if you want to be more precise you can go to the actual elevation checkbox here and just type in a value so we'll type in 35 degrees and also the azimuth now we have azimuth is the the angle on the sphere so we'll just say 90 degrees so it's pointing directly up so you can see now we've created this sort of arch of light underneath this triangular recess now if i grab this node beneath that second node i can now position the light again wherever i see fit without changing the angle so i'm going to position it so that the arc of the light starts just where this shadow begins and i'm going to make sure it's central with this central spike and these second two nodes control the actual width of the central hotspot or the central beam of our light, the main area or the strongest point of our light. And the outer nodes control the overall width of our light. This is like having a Ari Studio light whereby you move the reflector in and out of the light. Moving the reflector into the light narrows the beam and moving it out towards the outer rim of the light widens the beam so it gives you some control on your on your spotlight so what I'm going to make a narrow beam here and we're going to look at the ambient slider now the ambient slider should be thought of as a room light so you can imagine a room light or an overall stage light if I take it to the left you can see the room or the stage has gone completely black and we're now left with just our spotlight that we created earlier and if I take it to the right the room light is now very very bright and the stage is fully lit and you can see our spotlight is almost lost 
because the ambient light is too strong. So we're going to drop that down again now. We're going to drop the light. This is like when the play starts in a theatre and they, the curtain rises and the lights drop. So your eyes are concentrated now purely on the stage and what you can see is what the lighting director has created. And that's what we're going to try and do today. So I'm going to click on this node now um, because I've narrowed the light. You can see the arch has actually dropped. And if you can imagine, I'm trying to create a light that's slightly off stage. It's, more, it's somewhere up here and it's pointing down towards our stage. So I'm just going to lift it slightly again, just so that the, the arc of light begins where the shadow ends underneath this recess. And I think that's quite good. And we'll narrow that beam of light again. And we'll increase our distance. Again, with each adjustment, you need to re reposition because it does have an effect on where the arc of light begins. OK, that's good enough. Now, what we'll do now, we're trying to introduce more lights into our scene. I think the ambience is, is still looking a little bit bright, so we'll, we'll drop that down a bit more. And I'm going to create another light now by just pressing copy. And you can see what happened there is the light became twice as bright because there are now actually two lights here. And that's indicated by this drop down here. So we've got light one and light two. And if I make sure light two is selected and I grab this node here, I can now drag that light over to this first column and position it roughly in the same kind of place. And again, I'm going to press copy and drag that light over to the third and final column. Again, I think the actual width of the lights is still a little bit wide for my liking. So I'm just going to narrow those again and increase the distance. And I'll return to light number two and do the same. Just slightly narrow that field of light. And for number one, we'll do the same. Just narrow it. So click on the drop down, select light number one, and we'll narrow that cone of light. OK, so we've got three separate sources of light in our scene. Now, just to make it a little bit more interesting, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to light number two and I'm going to change the color of that light. And to do this, I'm just going to click on this color swatch here and I'm going to go over to red, make it pretty bright red. And you can see that the light color has changed and the middle light, we're going to stay the same red, white. And I guess you can guess what's coming next. We're going to go to light number three and in good old USA or Great Britain fashion, I'm going to change that light to blue. So we have red, white and blue. OK, so that, that way we can change the light color to any color we want, just using the color swatches. And likewise, we can also change the ambient light color as well. And that's done by clicking on the ambient light color swatch. So for instance, if I went to yellow, and introduced an element of yellow. And if we bring our ambient light up, you can see we've now got a yellow light. Or I could change that light to purple and our ambient light is now purple. But I'll, I'll return that now to a normal light and we'll drop our ambient light down again because we almost want it in darkness. The next stage now, I'm going to duplicate my lights because they are looking a little bit weak and to do this I'm just going to highlight light three and just press copy and then I'm going to go to light number two and press copy and I'm going to go to light number one and press copy so there we are we have three stronger lights okay so I'm now just going to create one more light and to do this I'm just going to duplicate light number one so I can go to light one and press copy and I'm going to move that light now up to the top of my scene and I'm going to broaden that spread just so that it looks like we have a street lamp lighting up our, our little columns here. And I'm going to decrease the amount of ambient light again. And I think that'll be good enough. Now, before I continue, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn off my lighting layer 
and I'm going to go back to my background. I'm going to press Control and J or Command and J on a Mac. And on this duplicate layer, I'm going to introduce a black and white adjustment. So just click on the little circle, black and white circle here on the bottom of the layers tablet and click on black and white. And I'm going to drop my red slightly and increase my yellows just to add a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to close that down. I'm going to left click on the black and white adjustment and drag it over to the duplicate background layer we just made to clip it to that. So it's now only affecting that layer. And I'm going to click back on the adjustments button and I'm going to select brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to increase the contrast slightly and decrease the brightness. And I'm going to commit to that now by pressing the cross. And all I need to do now is go to file and export. Make sure JPEG is selected and press export. Now this is what we call a bump map and the reason I made it black and white is because it acts uh, a little bit more effectively when it's black and white. So I'm just going to call this bump map and press save. Okay and now we can delete this background copy layer by left clicking the icon and dragging it and putting it in a bin because we no longer need it because we've already created our bump map. Now we can go back to our lighting control panel by double clicking on this little white icon here and that brings up our lighting control panel and we can turn that back on by pressing the little checkbox and if we go down to here where it says load bump map click that button locate the bump map you just created which is here and we now have a bump map in which our lighting tool will model its specular highlights. And this is where the specular and shininess sliders come into play. But first of all, we have to introduce an amount of texture. And to do that, we use this slider here. I'm just gonna zoom in now to show you the effect this has. If I take the slider to the left, you can see it has an almost three dimensional effect on our image. And this is using the bump map which we just created to calculate where the specular highlights lie in our image and where the shadows are. Now, in this instance, what's happened is our light source is at the top of our scene pointing downwards. And yet the specular highlight has appeared along the bottom edge of our bricks. And that's not what we want. Now to remedy this, all we need to do is move a slider from the left to the right. And you can now see the specular highlights have reposition themselves to the tops of the bricks where we want them. Now, this is a little bit too much texture. If we take it all the way to the right, it can get pretty extreme. You can see here even a small indentations on the metal bars. Now, if that's the effect you're after, great. But in this instance, we don't want that. So I'm just going to bring the texture down to a more realistic level of, say, around 15. That should be a good starting point. Actually, slightly less than that, maybe maybe 13, 13 or 14. And if we zoom out, we can see the effect that's had. So now our lighter source is at the top of our scene and above these little columns. And you can see it's reflecting as we want on the tops of the bricks. And if I press Control and zero or Command and zero on a Mac and zoom out, and we close our lighting tool down, you can see the effect we've had. Now I'm going to return to our lighting control panel by clicking a little lighting icon here. And we're going to look at the ambient light Maybe lift that slightly and maybe look at the intensity of this second light by reducing the diffusion. It's all the balancing act this is, so I'm going to drop the ambient light again, ever so slightly. And that's the effect I want. So you can imagine this is some kind of scene on a stage and um, maybe it's a musical. Maybe someone's going to come running on now with another spotlight on them. But you can see the effect you can have um, using the live lighting filter. And again, at the top of our scene here, we can go to our light seven and maybe reposition that light a little bit nearer to our stage. So it has more of an impact. Narrow the hotspot. And I think that's looking quite good. So now what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to click on the top layer and I'm going to add a curve layer, making sure that the curve layer is on its own and hasn't clipped itself to the layer beneath it. 
and I'm just going to pump up our highlight slightly and decrease the darkness just to add a little bit more contrast to our image. And like I said, it is a balancing act this when you're working with lighting. Any any stage hand will tell you that. So I'm just going to return to our lighting filter and we'll go to light number one and we'll increase the distance on that one just so it covers more of the bottom of our stage. And again, I'm just going to drop that down slightly and I think that's looking a little bit better. So we'll just go to light number two and do the same there. We'll increase the distance and we'll drop it down. And we'll go to light number three. And again, increase the distance. And we'll drop that down. And it's just bringing into play a little bit more of this bottom right and bottom left side of our stage. And again, I close that down. And I think that's that's enough for, for, for this particular image. If anything, I'll click on the curves layer and above that I'll add a hue saturation and luminance layer. And we'll just bring up the saturation slightly. And I'll add a brightness and contrast layer. And we'll increase the contrast and increase our brightness. So now we're going to return to the lighting layer one more time and I'm going to zoom in and we're just going to use the specular and shine in a sliders now just to finesse our specular highlights. If we zoom in here, if I take this all the way to the right, you can see it's, it's a nasty sort of jagged sort of effect. And if you take it all the way to the left, then it has very little effect. So we're going to lift that up slightly and we're going to increase the shininess, drop our ambient lighting just a tiny, tiny bit. So let's press Control and Zero and Command and Zero to zoom out. Right, we're just going to look at the diffuse now just to bring that down slightly because it is looking a little bit too bright. And I think about there should do the job and we'll close that down and what I'll do now I'll just grab our starting layer and I'll pull it to the top of the stack that's where we started kind of bland sort of boring scene and I'll drag it back down to the bottom and that's what we've ended up with a kind of peculiar looking scene I hope that's demonstrated to you how you can use the lighting tools and the texture bump maps to create interesting lighting effects in your photographs and I hope you found that useful